Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, where we talk all of the news in the world of the NBA and college basketball. My name is Ben. And I'm Pauline. We are back. I am We're new. We're back. I brought I'm a new friend. to the basketball <laughs> show. So I've been here kind of like doing everything almost. Yeah, he's been around. Baseball, sports, football, soccer. That is my baby. So That's you guys, my favorite I was going to say, you guys probably have heard Ben. So you, if you, you probably have to... if you listen to other shows, yes. Yep. I'm kind of all over. And is Pauline on a lot of the you know. sort of so we're teaming up. gossip side. So yeah. now we're <laughs> now we're teaming up here on the basketball one. Yep. Which I'm definitely looking forward to. It's a new start for me on yeah. the basketball one. Basketball is actually the sport I played most of. Aww. So I did a lot of soccer. Basketball is my favorite sport. I did okay. a lot of soccer in the <laughs> early part. And then I did a lot of basketball at the end. I feel so. like everybody starts out in soccer, though. Soccer yeah, and karate. I wish I would have stayed there, though. Aww. Because now it's my favorite sport, soccer, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, I could have had, like, not not. Bragging. Oh, he had I'm big dreams. Humble, he had big but dreams. I was like, I was pretty good. I had some potential. You know, but, just just you know. Uh, it is I wasn't, what it is. you know. <laughs> I turned to basketball and then I stopped there. I only, because I feel like if you play more than one sport, you're kind of. It's a great thing, don't get me wrong, but right. you're kind of like limiting yourself because you can't reach your full potential because you're focused on other things. Yeah. But I think it's great because. I think the more sport, more sports you play, the less the chance you have of injury. Because I feel like if you're because you're crossing over exactly. Mm-hmm. Like if you're doing one thing, like say you're doing just like basketball, right? You're only continuous. jumping and running. It's continuous same thing. If you're doing like football with soccer with baseball, you're mixing in everything. You have like a little bit of a down season exactly. with baseball. So I feel like that's better. But I, I stuck with one. And then I transitioned in. I but wish I would have stayed with soccer. Though. It's like funny though, because like my dad actually, um, when he was in college, he was a three sport athlete. So like, oh, long, like, well, not that long ago. I mean, my dad's not that old, but <laughs> back in the day, you could letter in multiple sports. Whereas now like the seasons are just so long exactly. and like with more competitive seasons, like even in the off season, you can still play, especially like with basketball, you can play basketball year round and things like that. So that's one thing that's a little bit different. But I am glad that Ben is here. We're going to switch up the basketball podcast a little bit because now it's going to be not only myself, but now, like we said, we have Ben here with us. We're going to be alternating days. So you guys are going to have the both, the best of both worlds with Ben and I, as well as changing up a little bit of the format with basketball, which I'm really excited about because it's just going to be – I'm just excited now. Um, we took our, like, short break. Um, for about a month and so we have a lot to catch up on today but it's going to be really good because now basketball is in full swing and I'm just excited about it there's now we don't have to do too much fluff anymore. exactly <laughs> because for me I feel like in baseball and basketball mm-hmm. specifically baseball but you can throw basketball in there too I feel like the season is way too long for me mm. for me I look at the start of Christmas is when the basketball season yes. kind of gets going because right. then you have marquee matchups. You already have an idea of where teams are looking at. Right. Because for me, I feel like if you can already count out half the teams in the league by the time yeah. the all-star break happens, right. why even have the season that long? You know. So for me, I'd say mm-hmm. the season's 82 games. I'd make it 50. Take out 32 games. Okay. Everything's okay. a little more important. But that's not going to happen because money and ratings. Money on team, is the motive. Because every team has its own comcast affiliate now with its own broadcast team and everything so that's not going to change but for me that's what i would do same with baseball too the baseball is 162 games you can't tell me that half of these games aren't meaningless but yes anyways (laughs) we will be doing basketball as always it's we're going to be doing it every single day so i will not be here every day but the show will be going on every day Mm -hmm. so monday through friday So tune in it's gonna be a lot of fun definitely great and Basically, there's games every single day within college. I know. Within oh, NBA. I'm looking so for, I love college. Every day really does make sense. And that way we can cover literally everything. Nothing gets mm-hmm. untouched. Nothing Even gets lost. Like some meaningless games like the Sixers against the Nets, <laughs> which happened last <laughs> night. But So that way we touch on every single game. We right. do not have to worry about missing any of them. We're doing the show every day, which is great. So I guess we'll get right into the thick of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to start off the first segment talking about news within the NBA and scores from last night, as well as some games that might be going on tonight. Right. So we'll sort of look at some box scores. So last night, the Sixers pick up their 10th win of the season. Joel Embiid is talking about playoffs. Probably (laughs) a little too early, but... I I love it. I I love it. I kind of like Embiid because 
He's having fun with it. Everything on yeah. like Twitter and yeah. he's had his incidents where he's been injured the first couple of years. I was going to say years. he's back. Like, yeah. He's enjoying his, it. He's having his rookie season in his third year in the league. Right. Which is great. And he's actually excelling last night. Mm-hmm. 20 points, five rebounds, four assists in a Sixers victory over the Nets. 105 to 95. I like Embiid. He's going to win the rookie of the year in my eyes if he stays healthy, which is a big if because yeah, he, going he, back to Kansas, he was injured. So he's always injured. He has his injury issues, but he's definitely one of the up and coming good big men in the mm-hmm. league, and I'm I'm glad to see him doing well. It's something I did not expect. I thought he would just be a bust, kind of like the Greg Oden oh, sort of yes. treatment because he's yes. just always going to be injured, always hurt. Mm-hmm. But that has not been the case. Another game is the Washington Wizards defeat the Milwaukee Bucks one oh seven to one oh one. Markeith Morris with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Giannis and Ted Akumbo did miss this game because of an illness, so mm-hmm. he was rested. I love that kid as well. I'd say any player under the age of 25, he's the guy I'm picking to build my franchise around. Really? He's that good. You look at the numbers he's averaging this year. Okay. He's averaging about 24 points, almost nine rebounds, almost six assists. Mm-hmm. That's like LeBron, young LeBron-esque. Esque. I'm not comparing okay. him to LeBron, but just numbers-wise, it, it matches up. He's leading his team in points, assists, rebounds, steals, and blocks. He's literally everything for Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. They're 18 and 18. That's not terrible, but he's. I we'll think. It. I think he'd be even. I think he'd be an even bigger star if people could pronounce his name. <laughs> I really do. Like Giannis and Ted Akumbo. He has like 20. I love the name Giannis. I have vowels. a friend named Giannis. I love that name. He has like 20 vowels in his name. Like there's just something simple about LeBron, KD, LeBron, Steph, Steph, Russell, Kobe, my, MJ. You know what I mean? Giannis and Ted Akumbo. Like Gian, <laughs> just, Giannis, <laughs> what do you. You know what I mean? I feel like if his name was a lot simpler. He has simpler, to go by one name. Yeah, he has to just go by Giannis. If his name was a lot simpler to pronounce, I think he'd be even a bigger star than he is. Seriously. I, they just avoid talking about him. I think he's fabulous. <laughs> the Clippers find a way to win last night over the Miami Heat, 98-86. to 86. The return of Chris Paul, a very good game, 19 points, 18 yeah. assists, and six boards. They were doing well. They were 14-2. and two. They've had some injury issues, Paul being one of them. Blake Griffin is still out. Yeah. I think they're kind of like that dark horse team in the West, the team that right everyone's now. forgetting about. They are they started going, off pretty yeah. well, played kind of a weak opponent, but if they get healthy at the right time, they could be a little dangerous. They're just, I actually am a little bit annoyed by them right now because they just beat the Kings the other day on Friday and it was my first Kings game. So I'm a little bit annoyed by them, but I agree because I was thinking about that. They've been kind of really under the radar due to injuries and things like that. Unless you're talking about, you know, like doc or some antics with him. But other than that, as far as like the squad as a whole, they really are just they're, they're not making big noise this year. They remind me of the Thunder from last year. Kind of like that spoiler role. Like yeah. the Thunder topped the Spurs. The Thunder should have beaten the Warriors. They choked a 3-1 lead. I feel like the Clippers could be that team this year when the playoffs happen. So they're kind of that like spoiler role. The Rockets improved to 30-9 and with a 129-122 victory over Toronto. James Harden is the storyline here. 30 yes. <laughs> points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists, so a nice little triple-double, but he actually had a quadruple-double because he also had 10 turnovers. <laughs> Jamesy doing everything in this uh, distributor role under Mike D'Antoni. The team's playing well. They're 30-9. and nine. They're shooting three-pointers at an all-time historic rate. But for James Harden, I mean, he's having his, great, his greatest season of all. He's really playing really well on offense. He's doing something I've never seen him do, and that's actually pass the ball. Yeah, he's Ben's kind of, really impressed with him right now. I am. He's kind of being a little more unselfish. He's like becoming into one of those unselfish stupid superstars, mm-hmm. which is something you would have never seen from Harden within the past few years he's been with the Rockets because they've been a decent team. They were in the Western Conference Finals a couple of years back. Right. But he was the guy that's like kind of like Russell Westbrook-esque, like just not even passing the ball, but now it. he is. I know you love Westbrook. <laughs> I was going to say I love Westbrook. Yes, I know you do, but... I love me, that attack kind of mentality. You gotta, you gotta but love then that. again, yeah, sometimes, you know, you got to be a little, you got to know when to give it up. Yeah, for me, Harden's kind of evolving, which is great to see. The Grizzlies pick up a win, 88-79 to over the Utah Jazz. Grizzlies coming off their win on Friday over the Warriors where they overcame a 24-point deficit. Mm-hmm. Gordon Hayward, the leading scorer for Utah, 22 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. And Mike Conley back playing point guard for, for the Grizz. 19 points, 9 assists, and 2 boards. Great to see him back. They've been okay even without him, and he's the highest-paid player in the league now. So 
I guess it's going to be good to get him back and, and healthy for the Grizzlies, who have been a decent team for the last few years. Good big men in Gasol and mm-hmm. Randolph. So see if they can get going together. The Cavaliers 120-116 over the Suns. Cavs improved to 28-8. and LeBron, 28 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists. Eric Bledsoe with 31 points, 8 assists, and 2 rebounds for the Suns. The Warriors overcome a 16-point deficit to Pauline's Kings and uh, win 117-106. to My heart. <laughs> my heart. I mean, I saw this coming. I, I know. But... We're, we're here in Sacramento, so I, I follow the, the King. I'm not a Kings fan, but I follow the Kings okay. because we're kind of forced to. It, it's right here. So, <laughs> we're forced to. <laughs> so my mom's watching the game and everything. The Kings are up by 16, and I'm like, the Kings are going to lose. Dude, I said okay, that, and well, I'm like, well, this is what's going to happen. And my friend was so – she, like, laughed at me because she's like, Pauline, what are you talking about? Because when we were at the – um, game on Friday with the Kings and the Clippers, they were only down, I believe it was by like three, two or three points with like 40 seconds left to go in the game. And I was like, guaranteed we're losing by seven. And then she was like, what? Like, da, 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 da. I was like, nope, we're going to lose by seven. Ended up losing by eight. And I was like, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. They just cannot close out. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What they're just it is. not a good team. I mean, they're, I, oh. they're vying for, I know, I know it's things. <laughs> <laughs> They're vying for the eighth seed in the West, which I'm right. kind of surprised. I did not expect they'd be doing that, 15-22. Uh-huh. But they're just simply not a good team. One good player, DeMarcus Cousins, a bunch of other And that kind of bothers me because, I mean, don't get me wrong. DeMarcus is a great athlete. He is. But if DeMarcus right now, with how he is just right now, you know, we're, we're waiting for him to get that James Harden maturity spurt, you know. But until then, if that's going to be our best player, it's just going to be, you know, and and when I was at the game on Friday, I was thinking that too. I was like, great, now he's going to think that he needs to be the savior. And it's just not no ice in the veins right now because the emotions, the emotions. So I, I hate to say it, but the Kings have just been a mess. Oh, they've been in the lottery every year <laughs> since they've been in the lottery every year since 2004. <laughs> they've drafted a whole entire new roster of 12 players. If you I put it yes, that way, in the lottery. Yes, yes. They're, they're just a mess. They haven't really developed 2018 is our year. <laughs> they haven't really developed anyone. The best, the best draft pick has been Cousins, and he's great. Mm. But he has all the all so the flawed, distra- so he has, flawed. He has all the distractions so flawed. with him, and we'll have to wait and see. But anyways, mm. so they lose after a 16 point lead to the Warriors. They mm-hmm. lose 117 to 106. Warriors improved to 32 and six, the best record in the West. The Pistons go to double overtime to top the Trailblazers, yes. 125 to 124. Andre Drummond, 28 points, 14 rebounds, and four steals. CJ McCollum with 35.6 assists and three rebounds. Pretty good player, but mm-hmm. Portland just not really Can't replicating that success they had last year. The The Lakers, really one of the more surprising teams to my sort of opinion. They win last night over the Magic 111 to 95. D'Angelo Russell leads them with 17 points, eight rebounds, and seven assists. Nikola Vucevic leads the Magic with 19.7 boards and 4 assists. Luke Walton really turning around this Lakers yeah. team slowly but surely. 15 I like and 26. it. I like it. I mean, I'm a Kings fan, so I can't like it too much, like I said, but I like it for you Luke. you got to respect I like it for team. Luke. I do. Exactly. I do. Luke Walton, uh, really, in my eyes, one of the Coach of the Year candidates. The Lakers like already it. winning almost as many games as they did last year. So, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty What a real impressive. young squad, you know? Definitely. You have a lot of young players. Brandon Ingram. Like you have Julius, real young, like fresh squad. <laughs> Julius Randle had a triple double the other night. You have D'Angelo Russell, a good game last night. Jordan Clarkson. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and they have the big free agent acquisition of Timofey Mozgov. I yeah, mean, he's he's, been, he's <laughs> fantastic. So. Right, right. I'm actually really enjoying them. I'm not gonna lie. I yeah, mean, <laughs> line, about, line about Mozgov, but anyways, I mean, with how the NBA is right now, everybody's getting at least ten million dollars. So. We'll take our first break of the show. After the break, we'll talk about college basketball news. A couple of upsets within the top 25 last night. Mm-hmm. And Lonzo Ball continues to impress for UCLA. We'll talk about that right after the break at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
from news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back into the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Number four, UCLA impresses last night. They improved mm-hmm. to 16-1, and one, an 89-75 to 75 victory over struggling Stanford. Lonzo Ball, the freshman point guard from Chino Hills, 21 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. This kid reminds me so much of Jason Kidd. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. they have, like, the California mm-hmm. sort of background, too. Jason Kidd, obviously, from NorCal. Lonzo Ball from SoCal. But he reminds me so much of Jason Kidd. And their numbers in college, when Jason Kidd was at Cal, right. and now Lonzo Ball at UCLA are so similar. similar. I mean, he's he's fabulous. I think he's probably, freshman-wise, going into the NBA next year, I'd probably take him over anyone else. Mm. Just because of that balance. He's kind of mm-hmm. a bigger guard, a nice distributor, can score, not afraid to get in there and bang and grab boards. I think he's spectacular. His other brothers right now at Chino Hills, I mean... Right. I'm not the biggest LaMelo ball fan because he's pulling up from half court at the beginning of the yes. game. Like, <laughs> he's, I he's love just, the antics. I love it. I hate it. I hate that. I love it. <laughs> I hate that. I mean, he reminds me a lot of Odell Beckham in that area. And we've, oh, we've been talking yes, about him we've earlier. We've been talking about Odell. But, I mean, I, I hate it. But it, it is what it is. So, But, yeah, Lonzo Ball definitely <laughs> very, very impressive last night. UCLA number four in the nation continues to win. 89-75 to 75 over Stanford. Number 11, Virginia improved to 12-3 and three with a 79-62 to 62 victory over Wake Forest. London Parentes with 24 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists. I feel like Parentes has been there forever. He's, like, <laughs> he's one of those guys that like starts from a, as a freshman and mm-hmm. plays all the way to their senior year. I, love, I like that, though. Yeah, you don't see that in college basketball like because we're in yes. the age of the one and done. The like, one and done and... Yes, and, and the got NBA like nineteen year olds. The NBA wants these nineteen year old kids because by the time they're twenty one, they're Anthony Davis. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like Anthony Davis would barely have graduated college last year. Mm-hmm. So by the time he's twenty two, he's already he's already getting into his prime in the NBA. If he's in college, he hasn't even gotten to the NBA. Right. So I get it. But it's like it's good to see going back to get your degree. He reminds me not necessarily player wise, but like Mario Chalmers when he was at Kansas. I feel like mm-hmm. he was there for like ten years. <laughs> And Parentis is the same way. He's been at Virginia forever because he started right away, and they've right. they've been good recently. They've been in the mm-hmm. tournament the last few years, contending for the ACC title. So he's a guy that I feel like I've seen forever. And it's like, God, how is how is he not how left is he already? Still, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he he plays really well last night. Twenty four points, four rebounds, and two assists to lead the Virginia Cavaliers over Wake Forest. Number 13, Wisconsin gets upset on the road by number 20, Purdue. The Boilermakers with a 66-55 to victory over the Badgers. Caleb Swanigan leads the way for Purdue. 18 points as well as 13 rebounds and a couple assists. Ethan Happ for Wisconsin, 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists. Purdue not been the greatest in college-wise for anything except for basketball. They've been pretty good the last few years. 14-3 and now mm-hmm. in the Big Ten. Wisconsin 13 and 3 in the Big Ten. So it, it seems like those two, maybe some others will be competing for that Big Ten title right. within basketball. North Carolina wins the battle of the North Carolinas. They defeat NC State 107 to 56. They just absolutely destroy them by 51 <laughs> points. Joel Berry the second leads it for the Tar Heels, 19 points, five rebounds, and five assists. Dennis Smith Jr. for NC State, eleven points, five rebounds on five assists. I feel like North Carolina can kind of be like that dark horse team come tournament time. Like, everyone's kind of flying under the radar with them. Duke's pretty good. have a lot of good freshmen. Talking about UCLA. Kentucky's always a threat. Baylor's undefeated. But North Carolina can kind of be that under-the-radar team. A lot of good, experienced leaders. Guys that were in the title game last year when they lost to Villanova. I feel like they could be like that sort of team that flies under Mm -hmm. the radar. Kind of makes a, a deep, turny run when no one really sees them coming. Pretty impressed with North Carolina this year. And then number 25, USC gets upset at home. By unranked Cal, seventy-four to seventy-three, 
Sophomore Ivan Rab with 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. He also had the game-clinching block at the buzzer. Very impressive, that young man. I've actually seen Ivan Rab playing since he was in high school. Oh, okay. He's from the Oakland area, went to Bishop O'Dowd High School, which is, seems to always be near the top when it comes to like rankings within California. So they mm-hmm. play a lot in the title games and stuff. Really good guy. He reminds me a lot of like a Chris, Chris Bosch type of player. Skinny, power forward, likes to step out at the perimeter. Good defensive. I'm really impressed with him, but... Coming back to school for his sophomore year, I think it's maybe hurt his draft status a little bit. I feel like he could have gone out as a freshman. You always want to strike when the iron's hot. He didn't do that, but he's impressing at Cal. Good game last night. Clinching block at the buzzer. For USC, they were ranked at 25. They're obviously going to go down the new polls since they lost. 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists, two assists for Chimezi Metu. He led the Trojans. They're 15-2 and two now, so they're still pretty good in the mm-hmm. Pac-12. They're going to be competing with probably Oregon, top team there in the Pac-12, but have to wait and see what happens. And then this happened maybe a couple of days ago, and Paulie and I have to talk about it. Right. <laughs> so Duke guard Grayson Allen, after his indefinite suspension for his third tripping incident within a calendar year, his indefinite <laughs> suspension, with, which lasted one, one game. One game. Which, for me, that's not much of an indefinite suspension, but I guess you can say because they were – not playing for three weeks. He was kind of suspended for the team for three weeks. They took his captainship, which, okay, big deal. Like, look out. They took the C off of his jersey. Ooh. Big deal, guys. But anyway, so he returns. First game, you know, nothing nothing interesting happened. Right. Second game against Florida State on Saturday. The ACC has come out and says that it's inconclusive, so we're not sure if he intentionally tripped a Boston College player or not. But, but if you watch the video... It looks he like tripped. he might have. <laughs> yeah. If you watch the video, it looks like Grayson Allen might be up to his old ways. Right. So he basically, to walk you through it, basically he is at the top of the key mm-hmm. playing defense. Some guy comes up to set a screen on him. Grayson Allen, kind of a younger guy, like 6'2", 6'3". Not really the strongest type of player. Kind of takes that screen, gets knocked down a little bit, kind of falls forward. But he sticks out his back leg. Yeah, jets it kinda out. Kind of sticks it up there. The Boston College player doesn't go down. He kind of brushes it off and goes mm-hmm. on with his day. For me, I would have f- fallen down. Absolutely. Yeah, we <laughs> we would have did. I would have flopped so hard. I would have pulled like one of those t- traditional soccer plays. Yes, my, leg is, my leg is broken. I looked at my, my coach calling for a T. I you know, tore my ACL, <laughs> like, like, Just rolling on the ground. That's not the case. But anyways, I would have done that to try and show no, that, oh, he's tripping me again. Exactly. Get this guy out of the game. That doesn't happen. ACC says it's Blow it up inconclusive, more. which it is. You can't really say that But I think only because it. the guy that he was, you know, aiming for, I guess you could say, didn't fall. And only because of that. Given it, Grayson Allen's history, you have to sort of go on and say he did it intentional. Yes. But there's not enough evidence to show DeMarcus, it. DeMarcus intentional Draymond Green kicking Westbrook, people in the intentional. Ding, ding, intentional even if it wasn't even if it wasn't not this yeah yeah <laughs> exactly like you saw Russell Westbrook last week did he throw the ball at the official right. head intentionally <laughs> yes. or not like the question is we don't really know right but this, the same sort of thing here with Grayson Allen so mm-hmm. it's intentional I think he did it too yeah I think, I think he, he did really too. did it just didn't you know it didn't get blown it didn't up connect yeah it didn't connect but it was I definitely think he did. I think he did it too but anyways nevertheless Grayson Allen still a member of Duke and still doing well for the Blue Devils they're honestly going to need him come tournament time mm-hmm. an experienced leader a junior he's been there he's won a national title when he was a freshman a lot of freshmen on this team he's gonna have to be there to lead them come tourney time so I hope he can get it together and not do any of these stupid tripping antics right but, We'll have to wait and see what happens. We'll take our last break of the show. After the break, we're just going to talk about basketball news in general. We got Draymond Green talking about DeMarcus Cousins, mm-hmm. saying he's the best big man in the league. We'll debate that and more after the break at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. So 
So last week, the Cleveland Cavaliers acquired Kyle Korver from the Atlanta Hawks within a trade that sent Mike Dunleavy mm -hmm. to Atlanta. By the way, for the Cavs, I think it's a fantastic move. Right. I think Kyle Korver can be Ray Allen. He can stand out on the perimeter, wait for LeBron and Kyrie Irving to drive in the paint, dish it out to a wide-open jump shooter, average 12, 13 points a game, hit three or four threes. I think it's a fantastic move. I think right. it helps him come finals time. Beautiful move. But anyways, Mike Dunleavy, who has been around forever, I think, he gets traded from Cleveland, where he never played, to the Atlanta Hawks as part of this deal mm -hmm. involving Kyle Korver. Well, Mike Dunleavy has yet <laughs> to come into Atlanta. He's decided to not even show up. He's trying to get a buyout from the Hawks, which right. would make him a free agent immediately, and he can sign with any Anybody. team he wants. Right, right. But the Hawks have other ideas. They want to actually bring in Dunleavy and make him a member of their team. Can you blame him? Would you want to go from <laughs> Cleveland, a legit title contender, probably going to be in the finals unless you got to imagine unless LeBron uh, gets everybody injured. Everybody gets injured, yeah. To go to Atlanta, who's 500 right now. Do you blame him? Come on, <laughs> seriously. Like, I get, I get this it. But this always cracks me up when the guys do this. I get it. You want to be a professional. My I was going to say it's your job. Mike Just Dunleavy's go to work. been around forever. Just go to work. He's been around since the early 2000s. He, exactly. Like, I get it. But do you blame the guy? Like, But I, I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to Atlanta either. I'm on Cleveland. I'm playing with LeBron. You want me to go play with Dennis Schroeder and, and Paul Millsap, who's about to get traded too? Like, come on. Are you kidding me? I want to, I want to become no, a free right. agent and sign back with Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> The, the weather's pretty good in Oakland right now. They could use me, too. Like, I get it, but, like, come on, Mike. Let's let's be professionals here. You've been around He's long enough. Go Your work. dad's yeah. a former player and coach as well. Like, just go, go to, to work. Just go to yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, just go to work. Just, just get there already. Anyways, in other news, Draymond Green calls DeMarcus Cousins the best center in the game. Agree or disagree? He's flawed. He's so flawed. I mean, this is coming from Draymond, though, who has his issues as well. But I just feel like they're buddy buddy. <laughs> you think so? It might be the case. I mean, I feel like off court they're buddy buddy. Like no, because I I don't I don't. Demarcus is a great center. He is, he is. I'll give him that. And when he's on, he's on, and that's great for us. But then again, like he's so iffy, and you never really know what you're gonna get. What Demarcus you're gonna get? You're kind of just taking a chance, and you could even get like two or three different DeMarcus's within one game, and you never know what you're going to get. So, I mean, I think that that potential, yeah, is there. But unless he, you know, decides to, like, you know, put his big boy, boy pants on permanently and always play with the big boy pants on, you know, it's just – it's going to get old. But then with the Kings, ugh, you know, what can we do? Because it's like he is so, so great. So it's like you kind of, like, deal with it. But, I mean – I'm kind of over it. Best big man in the league. I mean, if you're looking at true centers, I'd agree. But big man is really kind of thrown around now because you could be someone like Dirk Nowitzki and be seven foot tall. But are you technically a big, a big man? man? Yeah, because you're playing yeah. out on the perimeter. So right. He, if you say quote best center in the game, I'd agree because look who you're comparing him to. You're comparing him to guys like Anthony Davis, who's always injured. Okay. You're comparing him to Dwight Howard, which I know oh, we are it. in agreement, so he is not better than Marcus Cousins. Right, right. <laughs> and then you maybe have some younger guys, possibly Joel Embiid in a couple years. But then I, I think that feeds into DeMarcus because he thinks, like, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like, I don't know. Maybe you throw in Chris Stapps Porzingis in New York in a couple of years. Like, best true center in the league, talent-wise, I agree, hands down. Mm -hmm. Better than DeAndre Jordan, mm -hmm. all these other guys we talked about. But for me, he's not a guy I'm going to build my team around. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, I don't... The Kings are kind of like in a rut right now. So it's like, you know, beggars can't be choosers type thing. So we'll just take it and we'll deal with it. But I don't know. Yeah, he's definitely not a guy I'm building my team around. And he's not living he has up a to bad, the... a bad reputation with literally every single official... He's gotten coaches like fired. How, like when is yeah like you know when is like his worth gonna you know when you just want to deal with it versus you know let's think about something else. 
best center in the game talent wise, yes, but I'm not building my team around him. I just can't trust him to not to lead. Sort of you fly can't off the radar. to fly off the radar. You can't off the uh, and you can't if you like just you know take him off that day. Then he's just kind of like screw it, screw this, screw that, yeah, screw he's... everyone, and. I'll just throw you guys. I'll toss you guys a bone because that's what that's all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I can't. If he decides he's not coming, like he's not showing up, he's not going to show up. He doesn't care. He yeah, does I, not I care. I can't trust him to. Yes. To be the leader of my franchise. Yeah, he, Someone, it's like one of those things where if it's going like if he feels like we're going to win and it's worth his time, worth his while, then yeah, we'll get the greatest Demarcus Cousins ever. But if he's decide like if he's already checked off this game off his list as one of those like oh I'm just going to chop this up up as an L, it's fine. Then there's no way to convince them otherwise. <laughs> no yeah, way. I, I, I'm in agreement with you. And so. then, real quick, before we end the show, we'll talk about the updated NBA All Star voting. The first yes. sort of round of released votes was tallied on Thursday and released. Mm -hmm. Fans do have an additional week, so until the 16th, so literally seven days from now, to vote for their favorite players into the All Star game. The NBA is doing it a little differently this year, which right. I actually like. They're doing it like half fan vote and then the other half is split up between media members and the players and coaches themselves to get into the starting lineups, which is great because we've seen in the past people like Yao Ming, Kobe Bryant at the tail end of his career, Tracy McGrady, guys who were just injured all year long, not playing, getting voted in as all-stars because right, the fans because are of voting. Fans. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all great and all. And I mentioned Yao Ming. Kobe Bryant, Tracy McGrady getting voted in when they didn't really deserve it. But we might ha we might have literally the worst one out of all of them this year. <laughs> and no disrespect to Zaza Petrulia, but he is currently second in the front court. Yes. <laughs> in the Western Conference voting for forwards. <laughs> Zaza Petrulia this year is averaging 5.8 rebounds and 5.2 points a game. <laughs> He is behind Kevin Durant. Yep. About a little over 100,000 votes behind Durant. Mm -hmm. He's ahead of guys like Kawhi Leonard, Anthony Davis, Draymond, Draymond Green, DeMarcus Cousins, Carl Anthony Towns, LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, and Marcus Gasol. And here's, to me, here's where it's worse. If you look at the votes, <laughs> Zaza Petrulia, 439,675 votes. Mm -hmm. Third place, Kawhi Leonard. 341,240 votes. So he's got almost 100,000 votes on the third place Like it's tonight. not close. Yeah. <laughs> this is just absolutely insane. <laughs> there must be something going on in Oakland, like a hashtag get Zaza to the All-Star game right. or like something going on because there's no way that he deserves to be an All-Star. And can, when can we just eliminate fan voting in general? Like I realize- no. Look, this is your prime example right here. If that's what the people want, I, I agree. That'd be I like, agree. That'd be but like if that's me what starting, the people want. That'd be like me starting a petition to get literally... Okay, the Red <laughs> Mamba, Matt Bonner just retired. Yes. <laughs> that'd be like me starting a petition to get Matt Bonner out of retirement and get hey. him to start in the All-Star game and then, re and then retire after the game. Hey, hey. This is, this is just if insane. I, I agree. But if that's what the people want... He has more votes than Draymond. Yeah. Over 200,000 <laughs> votes more than Draymond. Like, how is, how is that even possible? Maybe the people are just like, you know, we want to see something new. Get a little switch up. This is terrible. Some of the other vote-getters within the Western Conference and Eastern Conference, I have no issue with. Right. LeBron, the top vote-getter as the forward stands for the East. Giannis and Ted Akuma, we talked about him on the show already. Exactly. Second place, absolutely deserving. Kevin Love in third, Joel Embiid in fourth. Interesting to see that the rookie's already up there, but I think sort of his popularity is. I was going to say he's yeah, yeah. He's kind of a popular. Everybody's guy. kind of like not afraid happy to for like, him. not afraid to say his, his what's on his mind right. and speak out on Twitter. So I kind of like him for that. People are enjoying him. Fan Carmelo in at five, Jimmy Butler six, Chris Stapp Porzingis seven, Paul George eight, Hassan Whiteside nine, and Jabari Parker in at ten. You look at the guards in the Eastern Conference side. You have Kyrie Irving number one, Dwayne Wade two. DeMar DeRozan, number three. Isaiah Thomas from Boston is four. Derrick Rose, five. Kyle Lowry, six. John Wall, seven. Kind of a surprise here. Jeremy, Jeremy Lin, Lin, number eight from the Brooklyn Nets. Number nine, Kemba Walker. And number 10, Avery Bradley. Talked about the front court in the West and the disaster. That is number two, <laughs> Zaza Petrulia. Zaza's going to go up there and he's going to show out. 
<laughs> he, watch him get the MVP. I was going to say, he's going to show out. He's gonna be like, <laughs> because I realize it's like 50-50 fans and media members and coaches, players. Right. But he's already number two by a wide margin. There's no way they can knock him down that much farther. Yeah. And don't you that's... think Don't you think after people are seeing this, like, oh, wow, Zaza, I'm going to, like, ha-ha, like, Zaza Petrulli, I'm going to vote for him. Yeah, kinda yeah like now how, he's going to get the, this, like like the people, funny votes. Yeah. Kind of like how people voted Harambe for president. Like yes. Like 15,000 people voted a dead gorilla as president. But So I, I think that that could be, like, a effect with Petrulia, but we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> and then for the guards for the Western Conference side, Steph Curry, number one, no surprise there. James Harden, two. Russell Westbrook, three. Clay Thompson, number four. Number five, Chris Paul. Number six, Damian Lillard. Number seven, Eric Gordon coming off the bench. Number eight, Manu Ginobili from the Spurs. Number nine, Andre Iguodala. And number 10, Zach Levine from like the him. Timberwolves. Levine? Yeah. He's got probably more bounce than any player like in the league. I like him a lot, yeah. He's a good young player. Minnesota, we talked about it. I'm really – they're having a surprising season, yeah. but not for the reason we thought because we thought <laughs> they were going to be like that breakout team. Right, right. And yet they're having the total opposite. They're like one of the worst teams record-wise in the Western Conference. Carl Anthony Towns, Zach Levine – Andrew Wiggins, you'd think they would do a lot more with the addition of Tom Thibodeau as their coach. We just got to find that mesh, Rookie you know? Chris Dunn, but they, they just haven't found it yet. Maybe they next year. They just got to, you know, keep staring it up. Maybe it'll gotta be next it year. Got to figure it out. But anyways, that's going to end our show for today. Pauline will be back tomorrow to talk all things basketball. Obviously, yep. update you on news that happened in the games tonight, as well as any other news in college basketball and the NBA. So my name is Ben. I'm Pauline. And she will see you tomorrow. And her and I will see you on Wednesday Sounds right here great. at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program